Many times when we talk about self-defense, we're talking about using tools like this uh, to defend against a physical threat. Or maybe using a tool like this. Or maybe using a tool like this. Uh, this video is not about a physical threat from another person. What I'm going to talk about are the threats against your body from not having a good immune system, and that, which makes you very susceptible to attack from uh, things outside that you come at you every day. Some of the information will be argumentative to some, will be unbelievable to others. Um, my point is, is that I'm providing this information because I know it has worked for me, I know it has worked for others. A little disclaimer, uh, I'm 74 years old, I'm a combat veteran uh, from, from Vietnam, and um, I've been living this lifestyle for a while now. Now, uh, there are a couple of things that I'm going to take you through uh, that you can consider to do. But first, you're going to have to get your head around and get ready to stop believing some of the lies that we've been taught since we were little munchkins about what's good and not good uh, to eat. Some of the myths about uh, um, what we need to do in order to stay physically fit and strong. First, um, sugar is your enemy. Any sugar of any type is your enemy. Refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup is the worst. Sugar is a poison to the same degree that alcohol is a poison. The difference is alcohol gives you a headache and makes you drunk, and sugar just messes you up and you don't even feel it until it's too late. Um, so what does that mean? That means you eliminate sugar. Then you eliminate all carbohydrate. All carbohydrate. If it's brown or white, it doesn't go in the mouth. No more pizza, no more pasta, no more spaghetti, no more any of that other stuff that we've been growing. No more cereal. None of that. If it's grains, you don't eat it. No bread, no nothing. Right? Because we've been given the lie that that is what we're supposed to be eating. So what's left? Meat, right? Vegetables and fat. Fat is your friend. Fat comes in all kinds of flavors, nuts, meat, uh, butter, dairy, avocado. There's plenty of that around. Fat is your friend. So those are the things that you really need to put in your body. Um, do some research on your own. It's called the ketogenic diet. It is a lifestyle change just like you decided to become uh, an armed citizen. That is a lifestyle change. If you have decided you're going to carry every day, that is a lifestyle change. This is no different. It is an add-on lifestyle change to help you be able to defend better. Okay? Uh, let's talk about how we eat. Uh, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. As a matter of fact, you should not eat breakfast. You should wait 18 hours or more before your first meal. So what does that mean? 12, 1, 2 o'clock. That's the most important meal because now you've fasted for 16 to 18 hours, maybe 20. You eat until you're full, until you're full. Then, probably about four hours later, you might want to have something more, but that's it. That's two meals, that's it, a day. What that does is it gets your body trained. It takes a couple of weeks, but it gets your body trained to burn its own fat, right? So it becomes fat adaptive. When you're doing the other stuff that we've been trained to do, what happens is your insulin keeps going up and down and it never stops. And then what happens is this. Your waist 
becomes larger than your chest. And if that's you, and you think I'm fat shaming you, I don't care. Because you have made a decision that you want to die early. You have made a decision that you don't care how weak your immune system is and that you're willing to be one of the 41% that's going to end up in the ICU because of the beer virus if you happen to be unlucky enough to catch it. So what you eat and how you eat matters. And it is a lifestyle change. It is not a diet. It is a lifestyle change something that you would do for the rest of your life. It is not a diet. It is choosing to eat differently, choosing to eat different things. And like I said earlier, I'm not a vegetarian. I think vegetarians are nuts, right? Because we're omnivores. We're, desi we're designed to eat plants and meat and fat. That's what we're designed to eat, right? The next thing has to do with your physical fitness, physically, how strong you are. Now, um, I am a little guy. I'm a little guy. I will never, never be one of those guys whose neck is out to their shoulders. I don't have the genetics. I don't need it. What I need to be able to do is can I walk around in the world, be strong, don't have to worry about if I've fallen and can't get up. I want to be able to run and gun with the young warriors, and I can do that. I just passed the U.S. Army, the new U.S. Army, Basic training fitness test. Yeah. Right? My point is, is that there's no excuse. If you're 65 or over, remember, there's this thing called Medicare. Medicare Advantage programs have silver sneakers. Silver sneakers is a program for you that pays your gym membership for you. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Go do that. Then figure out a, a program and you don't go every day. You don't have to go every day. You don't have to run 10 miles a day. You don't have to kill yourself off doing that. Walking is just fine. What's important is to make your infrastructure, your muscular skeletal system, strong, as strong as possible. Because that way, when you fall down, you'll be able to get up, right? You'll be able to do those squats. You'll be able to take those behind barrier kind of shots. You'll be able to run and gun, do the 50 yards, do the 20 yards, run up and shoot and not pass out. I digress. To come back, if your waist is greater than your, than your chest, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. You probably have insulin resistance, so your insulin is spiking too high. You have fatty liver, which is really bad, really bad. And uh, it need, you need to correct it, and you correct it in, in this way. Um, it takes a couple of weeks to transition from uh, your body to being worrying about where the sugar coming from and then enjoying having the other types of food that you should have. Now, uh, I've been doing this a year. And like I said, my waist was larger than my chest. I looked like I swallowed a basketball. And I didn't even realize it until one day I looked in the mirror and I was doing some reading and some looking at some, uh, some research. And I went, well, let me see if this works. And um, it does, it does. So I'll pause here and, and I'll put this information out for you. This was unscripted. Uh, do your own research, ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting. You need to do both of them together, not one or the other. They have to be done together. And I guarantee you in a month, you will feel markedly better, markedly better. And then you won't be part of that 41% that's going to end up in the ICU. So with that, uh, put your comments down below because I know we're going to get a few. Uh, and thanks for watching. Thanks for coming by the channel. And carry on.